turn on the news today, you're likely to see a story about some sort of natural disaster or a severe weather story going on somewhere in the United States. Seldom, if ever, do you see the story broadened into a larger perspective, one that brings up the question of climate change. Now, there is a distinction to be made between climate and weather, and generalizations go both ways. Whether Donald Trump sees snow and questions the concept of global warming, or I see an earthquake in California and connect it to changing climate patterns. We're probably both wrong, but I can't shake this feeling of existential dread when I see and read what is out there on the subject of climate change. Limiting warming to 1.5 degrees is not impossible, but will require unprecedented transitions in all aspects of society. Now, if you're thinking this would be a good place for an expert opinion, you'd be correct. Unfortunately for all of us, you're stuck with me for now. But according to a UN climate report composed by 91 authors using over 6,000 scientific references put out in the fall of 2018, we have until 2030 before the effects of global warming will have dramatic and irreversible consequences. Things that we have been uh, often showing is uh, what's happening to the temperature, and so far we have seen one degree warming of the planet, and, um, and, and uh, so far the warmest year on record was 2016. The report calls for large-scale changes to our global society, citing not only the harmful processes of the industrial and industrializing world, but addressing the issue of global poverty as a major contributing factor. The Sustainable Development Goals are our blueprint for fair and sustainable pathway to development that leaves no one behind. The powerful message is that no matter where you are born, no matter how marginalized your community may be, the world is determined to carry everyone along on our journey to a better and more equitable future. This study comes a year after President Donald Trump announced his intention to pull the United States out of the Paris Agreement, an international coalition dedicated to limiting the impacts of climate change. And so importantly, you look at reshoring production all the way, taking it away, from foreign polluters and back to American soil. The U.S. is second only to China in its emissions of these gases, linked by the Climate Report, the scientific community, and a large majority of anyone that isn't Republican to human processes and global warming. So this is the problem. The scientific community has identified humanity as the cause of a real and fast approaching threat to human existence which can only be stopped by what amounts to a rapid reversal of global capitalist development. And those with the power to do anything deny the existence of the problem entirely. I do not believe that human activity is causing these dramatic changes to our climate the way these scientists are portraying it. Scientists are saying that humanity and its behavior is contributing towards that. I can't tell you what percentage of that is due to human activity. And I think many scientists would debate the percentage. Now I know what you're thinking, or I hope that you're thinking it, but how can we be so actively ignorant as a society to this problem? And why won't those with the power to do something go ahead and do it? As I go about my day, you know, trying to find a job so I can keep paying for Netflix and go out for a beer two or three times a week, I'm not under the periscope here, but if the problem is so large and seemingly out of my control, what can I do if I care about global warming and climate change? Well, I decided to go to a music festival in the heart of where people understand the complicated ties between political intransigence, social mobilization, and income inequality. Westchester, New York. It is time for us to get to work and make the world a better place. And we're going to start right now. Man, I can't wait to see the look on those little Eichmann's faces when they hear this crunchy groove. I decided to ride a bike from my home in the Bronx to Croton Point on the Hudson River in a half-hearted show of solidarity with the environmental mission behind the music festival. This was the 50th annual Clearwater Music Festival put on by the nonprofit Clearwater Sloop organization. And I came here because of the man who started the organization back in 1966, Pete Seeger. Come all of you good workers, good news to you I'll tell. 
Pete's been a personal hero of mine ever since I saw him perform at my school back in 2014. In addition to being a prolific folk artist, he was a lifelong activist for workers' rights, deeply involved in the civil rights and anti-war movements of the 1960s, and largely responsible for the development of the environmental movement in the Hudson Valley vis-a-vis -vis the Clearwater Organization, which started as a project to make a sailboat to garner support and get people on the water to appreciate what was in their backyard. If you're thinking this would be a great time for an interview with someone with a better perspective or maybe knew Pete personally, you'd be right. But the Clearwater Festival is about celebrating the work that the organization does, educating people about the Hudson River and its ecosystems, as well as protecting those systems from environmental abuse and manipulation. The change in the Hudson River between 1966 and today is a testament to their and Pete Seeger's success, as well as what an individual can accomplish in the face of systemic injustice. And this weekend's gathering was one of people who believed in the power of organization, the impact they could have on society. And I was hoping that might rub off on me. Well, aside from just enjoying the day and the music, uh, we support the Clearwater. We're members and we donate to them and we believe in their mission and the, the beauty of Pete Seeger's vision of the boat uh, being a symbol of renewal. Right. So, you know, it's, it's kind of in our DNA here on the Hudson River. Mm -hmm. So you're from the area? Yeah, we live right here in Croton. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's nice, the home festival. Exactly. <laughs> right. Um, has being involved in Clearwater or the festival or just coming every year, has that inspired any activism or individual efforts on your part or people that you know? No, mm -hmm. but that's not what I would want to convey because mm -hmm. it's like the people we know and ourselves, we're already like preaching to the choir. So Clearwater is the message that we represent. So we're not more active because of Clearwater, but because of Clearwater, I'm sure many people have been inspired to increase their level of involvement. Right. So you can't support what the festival stands for and just be there for a good time. There's no problem with that, and the spirit of activism isn't lost either. There was a whole section of the festival grounds dedicated to it, actually. And I'll admit, up until this point, riding a bike here, being at a music festival, looking to speak with activists, I was worried that this whole thing would be an exercise in empty posturing. Maybe that I was virtue signaling in some way. But luckily, I was able to find some very motivated individuals. I teach at the University of Miami in Florida, and I'm a scientist who works, studies the ocean. So I've been working at this for a very long time, and I'm very happy to say the Citizens Climate Lobby, first group that gives me hope that we can actually get real progress in putting a price on carbon. Until the price is corrected uh, to reflect the damage done by the emission of carbon uh, fuels, uh, then we are still going to have the same problem. I'm the Westchester group leader here in Westchester County, and we have members uh, from all throughout the county, and we lobby and speak to people in our district, our local Congress people. And what would you say is the value of coming to a place like the Clearwater Festival? Music? Well, it's, it enables us to reach out to people in a, a, a short amount of time, a large amount of people because there's like thousands of people that come to this festival every year and they, a lot of the people come because they're interested in the environment, they're interested in saving the planet, they, they want to clear up the Hudson, that's just one aspect of, of the environment, ours is to clean the, all the environment. And this is a great opportunity for us on a uh, annual basis to speak to the people who come to us and give out our message. And a group I was very eager to get a hold of, luckily, was also there. Despite our current administration's aversion to climate science, a significant portion of the population does want to join the global community in combating climate change. And the United States response is a bill that is currently being considered in the House of Representatives called the Green New Deal. It's a bill that, like many other facets of American politics, is very divisive. But from what I've experienced, that division comes from people not knowing what the Green New Deal is. But I do know that 
the environmentalist group, the Sunrise Movement, was instrumental in getting this on the policy agenda. And I was lucky enough to get someone from their organization to talk to me about it. The easiest way to explain it is that it's a movement of young people uniting to fight climate change and create millions of good jobs in the process. So like, it's on the shirt. <laughs> um, and it's basically like, not just an environmental movement, it's uh, really heavily focused on environmental justice. Having like the environmental justice component makes sure that people will be guaranteed that they can still have a livelihood during the transition. Like that's why there's a, a jobs guarantee or like a, a living wage for all in the Green New Deal. The Sunrise Movement was kind of responsible for the Green New Deal or came up with it? Or it's like what no, was the so genesis of that? From my understanding, it was definitely brought to the forefront of national dialogue with the help of the Sunrise Movement, but it's really championed by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She was the one who, since she entered Congress, like made this her project, her platform. She was the one who wrote that resolution with Ed Markey. I don't think that the idea, I could be wrong, I don't think that the idea was born from Sunrise necessarily, but as soon as it became a thing, it was like, that's gonna be our campaign through the 2020 uh, elections because that's in line with our views. So could you um, kind of tell me what the Green New Deal is beyond just like the conceptual like environmental protection kind of thing? Yeah, so it's a lot of people uh, get confused because they look at it as just like a single piece of legislation, but it's really a blueprint and it's like um, well, the way it exists right now is it's just a resolution that's been presented in Congress and people can sign on to co-sponsor it, but it's really a call for a decade-long um, like mobilization of the United States. The reason it's called the Green New Deal is because it's modeled off of the mobilization of the Great Depression with FDR's New Deal, which was obviously not one bill. It was like programs that were enacted over the entire decade. So that's kind of the model and it has a lot of social components like the guaranteed jobs like free health care because we see all of those things as necessary to making sure that the mobilization is complete and just and achieves like the best outcome for the environment of all people so if the resolution passes what would be the, the result? first step yeah what would be um so that would mean that we can start drafting actual legislation in line with the goals that are set up in the resolution. And what do you think um, the benefit is for your group to come to like an event like this, a music festival? So one, we know people are going to be interested in hearing us talk and uh, we can't really do anything without donations and without support from people, without spreading awareness. It just kind of starts this like shift in what people are talking about and that's already happened because of like the national sunrise. That's why all the democratic candidates are talking about climate change now because like there was that push from, from activists and so you just need to be heard really. It sounds cliche to say but I really did feel a little less pessimistic and powerless about our chances as a society after meeting all of these people. It's easy enough to feel that way in today's world, but instrumental in tackling any problem larger than ourselves is coming together and recognizing the value of collective action. Putting aside platitudes in the at least ideologically homogenous setting of an environmental music festival, we can choose to have an impact on society and Pete Seeger's Clearwater Festival is a testament to that impact.